now, well, earlier we started with a conical pendulum. It looked like this, right? We're going to switch now. Instead, I'm going to take the stop harness remaining string and I'm going to spin it like this. And we are going to all analyze this situation. I'll talk about specifics in a minute. But this is what the picture looks like. So again, we have a stopper on a string. It is this time moving in a circle that looks somewhat like this. If I could draw a circle, it would help, but I did not. And we are going to um, define this as the length L, this as theta. And we're going to just start out. Uh, we have, we know L and the mass and theta. And we're trying, going to start out by figuring out the tension. We'll just start out with figuring out the tension. So what should we do next? Um, draw a free body diagram. Go ahead. Uh, we know tension goes up the string. And then force of gravity is down. OK. Going back to the conical pendulum. The free body diagram is identical, yet we are going to solve this in an entirely different way. What's different, and not entirely different, but the, there's going to be a major difference between the two. What is different here, Jay? Um, the force of gravity may or may not be perpendicular to the direction. Depending on the angle of theta, the force of gravity is why is it going to be perpendicular to the indirection? But what then is the indirection? So let's say that I'm spinning it. And we pause it at the position it's in. Class, please point now in the indirection. Okay. Notice this time it's directly along the string, whereas here it was horizontal. And it all has to do with where the plane of the circle is that the object is spinning in. And this is something to be very careful of. Whenever you are talking about some of the forces in the indirection, you need to be careful to identify the indirection. In this case, tension is in the in direction. Which means our next step, um, Minji, is going to be what? We cannot sum the forces at this point. Soon we will, but we oh. cannot do it yet. Okay, so you have to break that tension into x and y. Two things. One, we're not going to break the tension into components, and we're not going to break anything into x and y components. Okay. So, why are we not going to break the tension into its components, Evan? Because doing so would um, it wouldn't be correct all the way around. It change because it's not always in the same. I, I'm sorry, I don't, I'm going to, going to go with something different. Uh, Goolsby? Um, the tension is in already. The tension is already in. We're summing the forces in the in direction. The tension is always inward, right? So there's no reason to break the tension into its components. So we're going to sum the forces in the in direction. And Goolsby, what other direction? Um, y. What is the other direction? Kevin? the tangential direction. Notice the directions we're summing the forces in are actually changing the whole time depending on where this object is located. We're going to be summing the forces in the in direction and the tangential direction, which means we need to break what into its components class? Force of gravity. So we're going to break the force of gravity into its components. We have the force of gravity perpendicular, or force of gravity I'm going to call it out, and this is going to be the force of gravity tangential. This is, let's see, this is theta, correct? No, this is theta. So uh, I'll walk through it because we're running out of time. We have the sine of theta equals opposite over hypotenuse. Opposite is the force of gravity tangential divided by hypotenuse, which is the force of gravity. Therefore, the force of gravity tangential equals mg times the sine of theta. And the cosine of theta equals adjacent over hypotenuse, which equals the force of gravity outward. 
which divided by the force of gravity. Therefore, the force of gravity outward is equal to mass times acceleration due to gravity times the cosine of theta. We can redraw our free body diagram. We have tension, force of gravity tangential, force of gravity out. I'm going to, just for fun, sum the forces in the tangential direction. We get that the force of gravity tangential is equal to mass times a tangential acceleration. Therefore, the mass times the acceleration due to gravity times the sine of theta equals mass times a tangential acceleration. Ooh. I haven't done this yet this year. Wow. This is exciting. Give it to me. Everyone brought mass to the party, therefore we could be equitable. We could take mass from everyone. We get g times the sine of theta equals the tangential acceleration. Just for fun, we figured out the value of the tangential acceleration is equal to g times the sine of theta. We can also sum the forces in the indirection. Sum the forces in the indirection, we get the tension minus the force of gravity outward is equal to mass times the centripetal acceleration. So we get tension minus mass times the acceleration due to gravity times the cosine of theta equals mass times the tangential velocity squared divided by the radius. In this particular case, class, what is the radius? L. In this particular case, it's just the length of the string. So then the tension is equal to mg cosine theta plus mass times the tangential velocity squared divided by the length. So the tension is dependent on the angle. We have about two minutes left. How do we figure out the minimum velocity necessary to keep this object moving in a circle? The minimum velocity in order to keep this object moving in a circle. I need someone, first off, to tell me where it's going to be. Sam. At the top. Ah. Notice that is going to be at the very top. At the very top, it has the most chance of falling. Therefore, theta is equal to what, class? 180 degrees. Thank you, class. Right? Theta is going to be all the way up at 180 degrees. Okay. What then is the tension in the string? Class. At the minimum velocity, zero. zero. So notice at that moment, the tangential, the tension is going to decrease down to zero. As I slow this down, we're going to get to the point where the string is no longer topped. And it's at that point where the tension is equal to zero, where we are at our minimum velocity. In other words, we take our equation t equals mg times the cosine of theta plus mass times the tangential velocity squared divided by the length. So zero equals mg times the cosine of 180 degrees plus mass times the tangential velocity squared divided by L. Cosine of 180 degrees is uh, negative one, so we have negative mg plus mass times the tangential velocity squared divided by the length. Mass times the acceleration of gravity equals mass times the tangential velocity squared divided by the length. Give it to me. Everybody around this Thank you. We can be able to take mass from everyone we lose mass. We get that the tangential velocity squared equals the square root of g times l. Ladies and gentlemen, people, have a beautiful day.